It's our first full day in Kyoto, so we're heading towards the Gion district to do a little exploring. From our Airbnb, it's about a 20 minute walk to Nishiki Market and Potocho Alley. Our preferred method of traveling? By foot, to get our steps in to make us feel better about the food we'll be eating. You guys sent some great recommendations on Instagram about where to eat. I couldn't wait to try out this ramen shop. I would have never found it on my own research because one, it's an unnamed restaurant and two, it definitely felt like a locals only spot. When you walk in, you order and pay through a ticket machine. Tyler got the chicken seafood ramen with a thick soup and I got the blended, which was the combo of the thick and the light soup. After we ordered, we waited in line and the chef came to gather our tickets and confirm our orders. Now, I'm not sure if it's truly an unnamed restaurant or if it's called Unnamed Ramen, but it was so good, it doesn't even need a name. Right as our ramen hit the table, we found the chopsticks in the drawer below the bar, thankfully avoiding a major tourist panic moment. The broth was rich and hearty and especially good on a cold day like this. This is the most unique ramen I've ever tasted. It was a savory mix of fish and chicken with pieces of fatty pork and a seasoned soft boiled egg to top it all off. After our quick and efficient lunch, we layered back up to do some souvenir shopping for our friends and family back home. Good Nature Station is a hotel with a few restaurants and a market located on the first floor. With so many interesting ingredients and seasonings to be discovered, Google Translate was our best friend. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, it took us a second to figure out how to teeter-totter again, but I wanted to take a moment to appreciate these heat tech leggings from Uniqlo that kept me warm the entire trip. Okay, you get then we headed back to our Airbnb to rest up and drop off our goods. After some r and we headed out for drinks. Tyler found this quaint record bar in the neighborhood and the experience exceeded all expectations. Oh, this person scared me. We found some seats in the corner, ordered our drinks, and the yum yum egg. We didn't exactly know what this was, but if there's an egg in it or on it, I'm game. The soft boiled egg was topped with chunks of soft cheese, bonita flakes, and a sweet and salty sauce. But to sum it up, it was yum yum. We went upstairs to check out the record collection and to get a bird's eye view of the space. With a couple of drinks in my system, this descent was not easy. Back at the bar, we continued chatting with the bartender and DJ, learning about Japanese artists and albums. Our Spotify playlists are a bit more well-rounded now. Another bar snack and a few drinks later, our new friends quickly became fast friends. The next morning, we were moving pretty slowly, so we stopped for a pre-breakfast. The rice burger came with a side salad and soup, and it really hit the spot after last night. We then made our way to a cafe specializing in westernized Japanese food. The house omelet was so perfect, it looked like something you'd see in the mini fake food displays outside of restaurants. After second breakfast, we meandered our way through the streets, making our way to Nishiki Market. So many sights and smells around this open air market, but I blame Instagram for making me do this one. These candy coated strawberries are definitely cuter than they taste. In full disclosure, it's not something I'd get again. Mm, wow, huge. Ooh. 
came across this pub on our first visit in 2019, and I'm so glad it made it through the pandemic. Pub Car has a variety of beers, including some local favorites from Kyoto Brewing Company. And of course, no drinks are complete without some bar snacks, including this delicious baked tomato chicken. Today we're taking a day trip to Nara, which is about a 40 minute train ride from Kyoto. <laughs> A friend who grew up in this area recommended this lunch spot to us. The service was efficient and the location was central to the attractions nearby. Tyler ordered the beef set and I was in the mood for something lighter so I got the traditional breakfast set. After lunch, we headed to the Toraiji Temple, home of the Great Buddha. Tickets were about 600 yen, which gave us access to the museum and the Great Buddha. One thing to note is that photos and videos are not allowed in the museum. The sheer size and details of the temples were impressive, while the surrounding landscape and ponds were serene even at the end of the winter season. I resisted the urge to feed the deers, mostly out of fear of being eaten alive. But when in Nara, that's not so bad. After barely making it out with my life, we made a stop at the Goldfish Museum located in the Minata Mall. Today we're headed to Osaka, but first, a pit stop for lunch. For obvious reasons, I was very excited to try this restaurant called Ogata. I've never eaten at a restaurant that shared my last name, although I'm sure it's the equivalent to seeing a Joe's or Harry's back in the States. After devouring my chicken nanban, we hopped back on the train and made our way to Osaka. Admittedly, we never spent enough time here as we'd like, but we're looking forward to changing that on our future trip. Mm. We walk through the Dotonri area and finish the day with a sweet treat before heading back to Kyoto to pack up. The next morning, we train to Tokyo to shorten the travel time to Narita Airport on departure day. Since it was our last day of the trip, we splurged a bit with a night at the Prince Gallery Hotel in Tokyo. The view was incredible and the toiletries didn't disappoint either. Wow! Since we wanted to make the most of our stay, we grabbed some snacks from a nearby market and relaxed while enjoying the Tokyo skyline. Morning arrived quicker than we would have hoped, but it was a perfect send off to an amazing trip. Before our train to the airport, I grabbed a couple of long awaited snacks from a vending machine at the Tokyo station. I've seen locals drinking this vitamin C packed drink and have always wondered what it was. 
and for whatever reason, the canned corn soup has always piqued my interest. One warm, tasty, salty sip later, I was leaving a happy traveler. <laughs>